Welcome back to Yuri Jonah 120. Uh, this is the first video after a nice long weekend break here. Uh, and so today we're going to be talking about the circular argument and recursion and sort of the, the more general uh, ways in which things can be circular or logically circular in nature. And so what, how at the very uh, basic form or the, the, the most basic way that a, a, an argument can be circular is if we remember from previous videos how an argument works is you have a premise and another premise and a conclusion. And in this case, the conclusion just happens to be one of the two premises that you started with. In the most extreme versions of this uh, kind of reasoning, you don't even need the second premise. You just start with a premise that you assume to be true and then you conclude that premise, which you assume to be true. Now, I as long as that's not the end of your argument, uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with concluding, or at least taking uh, your initial state and then continuing to, to argue or to continuing to reason from that state. But if that is the end of your argument, then this is a logical fallacy. Uh, again, surprise, surprise, that we're still on logical fallacies, but th this is, again, not, not a valid uh, conclusion or a way to draw conclusions from your data. And uh, so that you can view this in, in sort of a way, kind of like a catch-22, where you, uh, in order to solve a problem, you need to come up with some condition or some material or some thing that, in order to even have that problem in the first place, you would not have access to or would not have. So again, the, there's this sense in which there's this circular problem, there's this chicken and egg uh, type situation where you're, you're not able to break out uh, and you're not able to get out of this kind of loop uh, that you're kind of caught in. Uh, the symbol, the Uroboros, the snake eating its own tail, kind of exemplifies this situation where you have uh, this, this kind of thing eating itself, or the, this argument that's in only self-contained, it, it, it doesn't deal with the kind of outside world at all. These are the sorts of things to kind of look for. Uh, but it is not necessarily always the case that all circular reasoning is, is bad or wrong. Um, it, the first example would, of course, be recursion. Uh, how recursion works uh, is you can do you can do a couple of things with recursion. But one of the things you can do is you can you can ask questions where you have something like is you know p true? Uh, if not. Something like this, where if if some condition is true, then you can return you know, some true, or, or you can basically s terminate your, your recursive argument. Otherwise, you can recurse further uh, or, or test on some different version of your initial data or your initial premise or your initial argument uh, and kind of recurse down or to, to treat this, this original, or th this next bit of data by the same uh, rule, the same program, the same function. And the same thing can be used to generate uh, data as well, where you have uh, some number, you then can either uh, return a number that is based on that number, or an application of a rule on that number. Now the, the, the key point here is that recursion has to terminate, it has to stop, uh, in order for it to be uh, something that you can kind of use in a valid way. Uh, and that you have to be careful when using recursion, that you don't get into these infinite loop situations where it just keeps going on and on and on and on, and you just build kind of deeper and deeper uh, argument uh, or, 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 or um, apparatus to, to generate an answer to your question without actually ever generating an answer to it. Uh, induction or logical induction is also another example of this, where in, 
its most basic form, uh, when you're trying to, to use an inductive argument or use uh, an inductive uh, way of reasoning, you're going to end up defining your, your what you're looking for in terms of what you have, or you're going to be uh, kind of justifying your behavior on, on your the justifications that you initially have. So you're, you're, you are eventually going to be going into a loop. There's a problem called the problem of induction, which kind of states that uh, when you're justifying you know, pretty much anything that you could justify, at some point you're going to hit this point where you're, you're kind of ju self-justifying or, or your, your argument is self-justifying or your justification is self-justifying. And so th this is when you get to that point, uh, perhaps valid or not valid, but uh, induction is an, a very useful thing, and you can actually uh, do quite a bit with it, including uh, defining you know, science itself. Science is an inductive um, endeavor. You, you can, I I if you're looking for what makes science valid or what makes science worth believable uh, or worth believing, you can actually get into these kind of circular situations. Uh, however, this isn't to say that you know we can't do better than that, or that we can't uh, you know find the places that are still uh, justified using circular logic or circular arguments, and kind of unwind the circular nature of them and justify them in different ways. Uh, but it's still, I I if you look to see what's kind of hiding behind the curtain of science, you will eventually, if you dig deep enough, find these circular things. Um, and in uh, uh, the of most general sense, uh, there's a theory of knowledge uh, called coherentism, uh, which is a, a, a way of trying to understand what knowledge is and how we come to have it uh, that bases the, 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 the nature of, of knowledge itself uh, on a circular uh, kind of pattern, uh, so that your the, the justification of that knowledge being believed has to happen in the context of knowledge and premises that are justified in a circular manner. Um, not everyone's going to have uh, or like this idea and, and support this idea, but it just goes to show that uh, there are ways you can use circular, re or circular reasoning uh, that aren't necessarily, uh, I guess, worse than alternatives. Uh, and they may be very foundational for the, the way that you already live and already uh, think and already do the things that you are currently doing. But again, it doesn't mean that we can't do better. It doesn't mean that we can't unwind the arguments and, and treat them uh, with the, uh, I guess, the skeptical eye. Uh, we, we can look to see what for signs that your argument or your process uh, is circular and has kind of become detached from experience or evidence. Uh, you can see things like uh, when it comes in contact with evidence uh, that doesn't support it. Uh, is it po even possible that the argument can be dislodged? Uh, you know, if you look at the original argument, there's really no way you can add another premise and, and come to this, you know, a, a conclusion that is against that. There, there is no evidence you can, you can do to kind of get around that. Um, it's not, again, to say that uh, all arguments that when faced by evidence to the contrary should be disbelieved, but it's, it's something that you can look for. Um, when evidence is provided, uh, it's always questioned. So, you know, I I if, you're, if you're observing somebody and they, you know, the people offer them evidence contrary to their claims, and they are always questioned, uh, this is, an, again, another uh, sign or, or a way to detect whether a circular reasoning uh, pattern is actually being applied. Uh, it doesn't always mean that circular reasoning is being applied. Uh, there are, of course, many uh, situations where people can have good reasons for turning down uh, questions on their evidence. Um, the international or the IP IPCC, the, the people who do the, uh, the, the the research into global warming, have all of their evidence questioned constantly uh, by people who are not arguing in good faith and not doing research in good faith. And sometimes they turn such requests for more and further evidence down. Uh, now, you, you can argue uh, as far as whether or not every single point where they turn the request for evidence down is a good or a bad thing, but it just goes to show that there's serious science being done here, uh, and it, 
doesn't necessarily always mean that every kook who questions you uh, has, has the uh, you know ability to paint you as someone who's arguing in a or, or conducting a circular uh, research uh, path. Uh, the most obvious, of, of course, is that you get to where you started in the argument or the, in what you're stating after a while. Uh, that's kind of a sure sign that you're doing something circular. Um, and it's also worth pointing out that not all, uh, I guess, fallacious arguments and not all broken logic is circular in nature. Uh, it is something that's common to, to come across where you started in, in what you're trying to describe. Uh, but there are many things that are not circular, and I've seen, even just looking around doing research for this particular video, a lot of people attributing circular reasoning to things that were clearly not circular, although they were totally it's really wrong. It's hard to watch YouTube with subtitles. Uh, examples of this, uh, I was reading uh, just earlier today, uh, of the, the quote-unquote birthers who consider uh, Obama not necessarily a U.S. citizen. You know, I, whether or not he's a U.S. citizen, the argument cannot be that the reason that he's not a U.S. citizen is that because he's the president. Uh, that is an argument people have actually used. Uh, and if the question is, can he be the president if he's not a, you know, if he's a citizen, or if he is not a citizen, and the answer to that is he is a citizen because he is a president. That is a circular argument. It's a circular reasoning. Uh, it's not actually valid. Uh, same thing when, when you look at things like, you know, everything in the Mormon Bible is true. And we know this because the Mormon Bible says that it's true. You know, oh there, there's this kind God, of self-justifying uh, argument being made there that cannot actually be uh, logically valid. Uh, you, you, you cannot assume that because something says something, uh, that that or because something claims to have the truth, that that something has the truth. Uh, there there may be reasons that you can um, come up with to 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 guarantee that 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 thing that it claims is true, but you have to go outside of that context in order to get it. Uh, if we go back to what we were mentioning before with coherentism, uh, in order to to get to that point where the the justifying thing. Uh, it is capable of justifying uh, other things, uh, you can regress. So you can go back kind of one step up. You can mm. look for what justifies it. Uh, however, again, sooner or later, you're, go you're going to have to uh, look for things that are either self-justifying or uh, justified in a circular uh, form like this. So again, th this there, there's a lot of these sort of subcases to keep in mind. But just to, to, to look out for situations where people are, are just using what they're argu arguing, the assumptions that they're arguing from, uh, in order to conclude those very assumptions. If you can see that happen in practice, you can point it out, you can kind of not accept that as a valid uh, argument, and you can go from there. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted, uh, including questions that are purely circular in nature. Um, and uh, hopefully this is uh, helpful to you. Do you have any uh, questions from the audience today? Okay, no problem. Uh, we will uh, see you again next video.